القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان صلوات This is the last Friday of this glorious month month of Ramadan, month of Allah month of forgiveness, month of mercy month of blessings the month which is the best of the months and the, the most blessed month in the whole year and see how the time passes quick and fast we were welcoming Ramadan a few days ago. And now we are bidding farewell to the same month. The time passed very fast, very quick. And this is how the life passes away. But Although every single minute and every single breath of our life is blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we cannot really thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that he has given us. It's not possible. But still we try our best to be thankful and grateful to Allah for his bounties and for his grace and mercy that we receive every single minute. But there are certain special bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which Allah bestows upon his servants on special occasions. Those occasions are a day or a night. But Ramadan is the whole month of blessing. Every single day of this month is full of blessings. And that's why today when we call it Jum'atul Vida' we feel sad when we really say farewell to this gross, you know, glorious month. There is a long dua of Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam in which he says vida to this month of Ramadan. This is a great dua, this long dua. But every part of this dua is amazing. And this dua Imam mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened the doors of forgiveness for us always. The door is always open, door of Tawbah. That's special in this month. And if we are not able to be forgiven in this month, then when will expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us? If even in this month we remain involve and indulge in worldly matters and issues, then when will really we will be able to uh, spend our time in more ibadat and uh, in activities that keep us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this month was month of Tawbah and still we have few days left. We should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. It's the first thing we should do. 
Because even in the khutbah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about Ramadan, he says, فَإِنَّ الشَّقِي مَنْ حُرِمَ غُفْرَانُ اللَّهِ فِي هَذَا الشَّهْرِ الْعَظِيمِ the real unfortunate person is he who remains deprived of Allah's forgiveness even in this glorious month of Ramadan. So Ramadan came and Ramadan passed and Eid approached and still we have some sins which are not forgiven. So Rasulullah says such a person is really truly unfortunate person. Ash-shaqi. The word shaqi is used. He's an unfortunate person. If you receive some money, some wealth, we, we think we are fortunate. Wow, we are fortunate. See, I received this much money. Fortunately, I was saved from such a danger. Fortunately, I have done this. Fortunately, I received this. So everything we count fortunate, you know, the Prophet says the real unfortunate situation is the situation when we are not able to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness or we ask Allah for forgiveness. We do ask. Man hurima, who remains deprived. He didn't say who does not ask for forgiveness. This is a very important point we should note. Who is among Muslims who does not ask for forgiveness in this month? Everybody does. Then why should the Prophet say he is the most unfortunate person? He is the unfortunate person who remains deprived of forgiveness. So actually he is not saying who does not ask for forgiveness. Everybody is asking. Even after asking, he remains deprived of forgiveness. First Ramadan, past, second, third, one week, two weeks, third week, and Laylatul Qadr, such a great night. But still, we have some sins which were not forgiven. The Prophet says, you are an unfortunate person. So is it possible? When the Prophet himself is calling this month, month of forgiveness, and I'm asking for forgiveness, and Allah is not forgiving me. Yes, it is possible. Either I'm not asking forgiveness sincerely. I'm saying, Allah, Tawbah, Tawbah. Please forgive me, and I will do the same thing again. This is not a Tawbah. This is one. The second thing, there are two types of sins. A sin which will be forgiven easily and quickly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya sari al rida See what we read in dua. Oh Allah who gets pleased very quick. We don't get pleased quickly. You don't get happy quickly. If somebody wrongs me, wrongs me, does something wrong to me, says something wrong to me, I'm upset. I will not get happy with him so quick. Even if he comes to say, sorry, Mulana, I said this to you, I'm sorry. I said, how dare you say this to me? Not easily I will get happy with someone. But Allah gets happy very quick. Ya sari ar -rida. He gets radi quick. As soon as you come and say, oh Allah, please forgive me. You are my Rabb. You are my Lord. Allah will say, okay, go. Go ahead. I did forgive you. So there are certain sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives quickly. But there are sins. Allah says, no. Why should I forgive you? I'm not going to forgive you. If I forgive you, I'm not a just Lord for you. My justice demands that I should not forgive you. But Ya Allah, I'm crying, I'm so, uh, you know, in situation of uh, regretfulness. Please forgive. No, I'm not forgive you. Why? Because Allah said there are two types of sin. One sin that you do against me. 
and another sin that you do against my servants, my subjects, my makhluk, my creation. That sin will not be forgiven unless that person forgives you. Right? I go and get somebody's uh, haq, somebody's rights. I snatch his rights and come and sit in my room and say, oh Allah, forgive me. Why should Allah forgive you? Go give him back his rights. Go and ask him for forgiveness. When he forgives you, Allah will forgive you. So, huququllah and huququl ibad. That's why there we, we have riwayat about Laylatul Qadr that Allah forgives everyone in Laylatul Qadr. It's totally open. Except those who have rights of other people on them and they come and ask Allah for forgiveness. Why should Allah forgive someone who has snatched somebody's or who has violated somebody else's rights. So this is very important. These last days that are left, we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us the sins that he forgives and give us tawfiq to do everything, do our best to make other people happy from us and not let any right of anybody remains on us. This is also needs tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One more thing that Imam in his uh, dua, as I said, it's long dua, we can, subhanallah, it's beautiful dua, long one. He mentions, he says, when he's saying, uh, farewell, he says, Assalamu alayka shahrullah. O Allah's month, Peace on you. Fi amanillah. Bye bye. We say farewell to you. Right? So, when we uh, say farewell to one another, we say assalamu alaikum. When we meet other, you know, each other, greeting and also, uh, you know, farewell uh, is assalamu alaikum. Correct? So, Imam is saying assalamu alaikum, shahrullah. Or Allah's month, assalamu alaikum. Fi amanillah. I'm saying farewell to you. He said, Ya Shahrullah al Akbar. This is the first sentence that he said. Oh, Allah's great month. Then this is the word that I want to share with you. Amazing. See, this is Imam. And this is where Imam wants us to reach spiritually. Let's see the sentence. When he's saying farewell, Assalamu alaikum, Shahrullah. What other attribute of this, this month he has used with Assalamu alaikum? He said, Assalamu alaikum, Shahr Allah al Akbar, wa ya Eid awliya'ih. All the month, that is Eid of Allah's wali. The month, the whole month is Eid. We are waiting for one day of Eid, first of Shawwal. When the Ramadan will and and when the Eid will come and when we will celebrate the Eid Imam says original real Eid of Allah's friends is Ramadan we are in the in, in, in the days of, of Eid every single day of Ramadan is the day of Eid for awliya Allah not for regular Muslims not for regular uh, believers. No, for awliya Allah, those who have great iman, who have great understanding of their religion, who are close to Allah, who are awliya Allah, for them, the Ramadan is Eid by itself. And other, you know, important things that Imam has mentioned in this, in the, these, these days that are remaining, few days for Ramadan, try to catch up what you have missed. If you didn't finish your Quran, finish it. You will not get this chance again. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you one more year, inshallah, and we hope he will, he will give you one more year. Inshallah. And next year, inshallah, you will get another chance of having those blessings of this month. This, this is true, but for this year, this year is gone. This year is not gonna come again, this one. These days, today, 
will pass, it's not going to come again in our life. Other days will come, inshallah. Allah will give you long life. But not this day. This day will not come. So try to finish your Quran if, it, if you're not able to do it. Or read as much as Quran that you can. Another thing you can do is give sadaqah. Try to give sadaqah as much as you can. Any good, you know, um, cause or purpose you can spend money, your, you know, your money for, do it. Spend money in the way of Allah before Eid. Sadaqah. Give people who need, you know, in need or um, uh, religious projects in need or anything good. Just spend your money. And also, as I said, ask for forgiveness. And try to check yourself that who, whose heart you have, you know, broken in your life. Try to fix it. Fix things among yourself. And also, see, easy to say salawat every time. Whenever you get a chance, while sitting, now you're sitting, listening, you can do two ibadat together. Just keep saying, Assalamu alaikum ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil fura Allah wa salli ala Muhammad wa ajil fura jahum. Mustahabbat, when you offer your mustahabbat for anything you do, you will get 70 times more thawab. For one salat, for example, between Maghrib and Isha, some people keep sitting. They might be doing another ibadat. I don't know. But don't lose that time. It's four minutes. It takes four minutes for four rakat salat, nafila between Maghrib and Isha. Don't lose that time. When you will get this time? Maghrib and Isha, between Maghrib and Isha. Because the Prophet said in his khutbah that if you do anything, Tatawwa means from yourself as a mustahab work is not wajib on you, still you're doing it, you will get 70 times more reward for that. So these are certain things that are remaining for this month. Quickly we should do them. And the, one of the purpose, you know, purposes of this um, fasting, or I, I can say the whole purpose of this fasting, because this is what Quran is speaking about, is لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Try, before we reach to Eid. Some people, you know, have their planning for Eid. Don't include anything which is forbidden in your Eid planning. Careful. Be careful. Try to remain within the framework of taqwa, piety. Otherwise, these are just rituals and just, uh, um, you know, slogans and just our tongue that we are using, claiming we are mu'min. If really the training period of 30 days really are uh, effective on our life, then we have to plan our Eid in such a way, have fun. Who said you don't have fun with Islam? Yes, Islam is real fun, brothers and sisters. The true fun is with Islam, with Iman. So plan your Eid in such a way, no guna, no sin should be committed. And then, inshallah, you'll see the blessings will remain and the effects of Ramadan will remain even after Ramadan for us, inshallah. One more very important thing, and which is originally part of taqwa, is that when we fast, we feel the suffering of people around the world, which in regular days we don't feel it. We might just hear that that person is hungry. Okay, what does hunger mean? We don't know because, alhamdulillah, we have plenty of food. 
and we have enough food to even throw astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu ilayh israf see the israf that people do in ramadan come on in regular in regular days they do israf they, they waste food but in ramadan waste food astaghfirullah is big sin but they do it why because they have plenty of food but allah said okay you should not eat not drink the whole day now feel how you feeling see feel the hunger of the suffering of people who are hungry around the world so this is the thing so we should care about those people that we call them less fortunate people originally less fortunate is he who remains deprived of forgiveness as the prophet said right not the person who remains deprived of money or food but you know or this is the term that is used less fortunate people less privileged people who don't have food hungry people many people die out of hunger even in your country even in your city do you have the statistics of that how many people in chicago die out of hunger they don't have food and they died so we have to be very careful about all those things and this is about food how about this is the food issue how about not food only somebody else is causing them to die out of hunger see in yemen who is causing this starvation millions of people are the, uh, on the brink of or danger of starvation starvation thousands of people are dying every day out of hunger who is causing it so we cannot remain silent on this volume the same thing happens around the world whenever there is a volume we have to say it is wrong the concept of yawm al-quds is this it's not political issue yawm al-quds is not political if it is against a country particular country or particular group or particular uh you know uh, sect no it is not something like that if it is we we are not with it we are against zulm who ever who ever doing the zulm if somebody who says i am a shia he does a zulm do you accept it because he is our uh, community member is fine let him do the zulm and but other person is doing zulm no 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 this is not the criteria the criteria from imam ali alayhi salam that we received is kuna lizalim khasman wa lil mazlum auna be always against oppressor whoever he might be and be with oppressed whoever he might be so if the oppressed person is a hindu if he is a christian if he is a jew if he is someone who is not muslim but he is oppressed and the oppressor is uh, a muslim apparently he claims to be muslim what should you do of course you will go with that jew or christian or hindu or sikh why because he is oppressed this is what imam ali said and this is what our religion says it's not about sect is not about religion is not about color or creed or country it is all about oppressor and oppressed be against oppressor and remain with the oppressed this is what we have been taught and this is the essence of your ibadat in this month especially in uh, the month of ramadan and that's why we speak about yawm al quds and we speak about yawm al baqi baqi day now if you say no they are muslims we should not again you know speak about muslims why we should speak against muslims more because they claim to be muslim and doing the zulm 
more more than anyone else jannatul baqi has been destroyed already is not in danger of being destroyed it is destroyed already it's going to be 100 years for it for this zulm and it's not just destruction of jannatul baqi it is also killing of people and uh, spreading hatred around the world and violence and terrorism and everything is coming from this source source of those zalimin those oppressors who destroyed jannatul baqi and until today they are doing the same thing and they're doing in the name of islam which is even worse so the bottom line is this in ramadan we remember everything which is good and remind ourselves and train ourselves for 30 days to do everything which is good and, re and remain away from anything which is evil anything which is evil all right and this is the concept is not politics it is religion we don't have to do anything with politics because politics nowadays the word politics is used in different you know uh, meaning islamic politics is different politics politics of imam ali alayhi salam but the word politics has been used for you know negative meaning in in, in such a way that now today when we say siyasat alawi so people say what imam ali was a political person astaghfirullah in this meaning no not at all politics means dealing with people siyasatul ibad aim ali muslim ar siyasatul ibad the deal with people with fairness and adl and justice and goodness and fairness dealing with people with fairness is a real islamic politics and you know how hard is that and if somebody want to do it and remain political with really fairness is totally hard that's why we keep away from that politics which is politics of today we are away from it our politics is what our politics is the policy not politics the policy is to remain with good people keep away from evil people اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم this is one be with people of bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala غير المغضوب عليهم keep away from those who are subject to Allah's wrath and who went astray these people are not groups a specific group is maghzub alayhim a specific group is dhalin no anyone who went astray anyone who is subject to Allah's wrath is uh, originally the one that we should remain away from him even if he is from our own community astaghfirullah maybe somebody dhalim but he like shah shah was shia right from our community so anyone who is dhalim should be condemned. Anyone who is malum should be supported. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and ability to remain a true Muslim and true mu'min, insha'Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us uh, in uh, this month of blessing and forgiveness, insha'Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us more opportunities in our life to seek the blessings of this great month of Ramadan, inshallah.